This is the Parenting IQ podcast where our mission is to equip you during your child's academic years to bring learning to the daily little moments. I'm your host, Dr. Kelly Cagle, and I want to welcome you to season four, Little Moments, Big Impacts. Hey, lifelong learners, Kelly here. I know that if you're watching on our YouTube channel at Dr. Kelly Cagle, you see this super cute hat. It says, for those of you just listening on Apple or Spotify, I hope that you're subscribed, by the way, on any of those channels. If you're not, I would be so honored if you go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel or and the Apple and Spotify, wherever you're listening. I'd be so, so grateful. But this hat, this really cute hat that I'm wearing says Raising Learners. And I had it made. If you love it and you would like one, I'd love for you to shoot me a DM on Instagram at Dr. Kelly Cagle because I'd love to get you one too. This is a movement, you guys. It's kind of countercultural what we are doing here. A lot of people have just been used to leaving education up to the system. And that's not what we're doing here. This is not what our work is about. This is not why you are listening to this podcast. It's because you are empowered to take back and for you to say, my kid is not just a number. My kid is a learner. My kid is somebody that stands out who I will invest in. They will not just go with the flow of whatever the system is telling them to do. So we are taking back this choice is up to us. And with that being said, we are talking about overstimulation today, which is actually something that happens quite a bit in schools. It really happens everywhere when you think about it. I want to unpack what overstimulation is because it could just be a term that you've heard a lot. You're like, man, I don't really know what it means. Here's in... Simple terms, overstimulation is exhaustion due to too much sensory input. So it's when your brain reaches exhaustion and it can no longer process your emotions well. That's when you fit overstimulation. For little toddlers, it's when they start throwing tantrums. For kids is when they start getting angry or aggressive or they no longer want to comply. For us adults, for some of us, is you just want to shut down. You want to go home and you want to curl up in your bed and do nothing or the couch and do nothing for the rest of the day. And for others, you just want to go to work and get busy. Overstimulation is when your brain is shot. And I want to unpack that conversation with you a little bit. We're not going to be here very long today, but I want to give you a couple of examples of real life stories that I've had with individuals lately of instances when their child reached this point of overstimulation. But with your senses, right? We have five senses. We've been taught about this or we've been made aware of it. Your senses, your sensory is made up of your five senses. It's what you see. It's what you hear, it's what you touch, what you taste, and what you smell. And these five senses help your brain process information. So when we get to the point that our eyes are fatigued, when our eyes are exhausted because of that sensory input through our eyes, then a lot of times we just want to close our eyes. If it's your ears, if it's your hearing, that's been too much noises, too many people talking, then our ears, you just want, that's why a lot of times you see kids plugging their ears and they don't want to hear what people have to say is because their brain is fatigued and they're not wanting to process that information right there. They've reached overstimulation. If it's a, it, the touch one, the 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 hand one, the feel, the touch, a lot of the tags. And I'm sorry, if you're watching on YouTube, you see me doing all these things with my body. And if you're not, then you can just imagine this for yourself. But the kids that can't stand the tag touching their neck, they come to you for you to cut their tags off their shorts or pants. They, the sock line that pokes their toes, they that bothers them. Those are all with the touch. Those things can overstimulate people too. You have kids that 
uh, calm down with a lot of the ca in counselors, the counselors uh, centers, they have stuffed animals for kids. That's because they can calm themselves down with something soft, something to rub, something else to touch, weight. When my kids were babies, they were infants, I had a weighted sack that would have a little weight around their belly and chest area because it felt that was for their senses. It felt like my hand was touching them. So all of these senses can also be overstimulated. Too much that sends them to overdrive where they've had too much and then it's game over. Two of the stories I want to tell you about that lately I've, I've talked to parents and I've brought it up to them that, hey, this is what happened. Don't feel bad because your child behaved a certain way. Here's the first example, a fire drill at school. Picture this with me. You are sitting in the classroom. Let's say that you're eight years old. You are calm, collected. You're learning. You are with your friends. It's this comfortable environment. It is a known environment for you. You know your teacher. You know your peers. You know the scent, right? You know by, by now the students have learned the teacher's perfume or the oil, the, the diffuser that's going on. They know the noises. They know the pencil sharpener. They know what to expect. People do not like a whole bunch of surprises. They like to have structure. They like to know what's coming. Then, even if they've been warned, hey, we're going to have a fire drill today. Parents, warn your kids that today we're going to have a fire drill. In that comfortable environment to your child, all of a sudden, alarms start going off. Then it's just loud, constant, nonstop. And I, in a classroom, I have been a public school teacher. It doesn't matter how warned you've been. It does, it is like, oh, oh my gosh, like it's time to move. We have to act. It is an emergency situation. For a lot of people, it can also raise their anxiety because they can think future, like worst case scenario. If this really happened, what if my classroom, what if the, the fire was down the hall for me? What if that fire spread? There could be trauma related to some of these things. If they had their house caught on fire or a friend's house caught on fire and they lost everything. These moments of drills, I know they are important. I'm not downplaying why they're needed so people know how to behave. What I'm trying to say is how kids react in that situation should not be considered as a, hey, they didn't act right. They didn't obey. I kept calling them. Here's what happened. One person, a child, her name kept getting called for the teacher taking role. She called her name over and over and over again, and she did not respond. When she was asked, hey, I called your name several times, Angie. Let's just say her name's Angie. Angie, I called your name several times. You didn't respond. That's not safe. Angie said, but I did respond. Okay, pause. Do you think Angie was lying in that situation? Or could have Angie really thought in her mind that she responded, but because there was so much stimulation happening in her little mind that she went from being comfortable in her chair to being under the desk or to moving to a certain corner with that constant noise Teacher, okay, move everybody, move. And everybody moving. Do you think that Angie really was maybe trying to lie? That she said, yeah, I did respond. Or could it be that she really thought that she had responded when the teacher called her name? So again, don't think, oh my gosh, my child is a liar because she told me something, but that's not what happened. That's not what the teacher said that happened. In these moments, in these environments of chaos, if you will. Don't hold your child to a, you should know how to act. You should have grace is what I am trying to say. Consider their senses and the overstimulation that, that takes place in these environments and have grace. And same thing if you are approached, because in this case, this parent was approached by school leaders of, hey, this is not safe. This is what happened. Inappropriate, not okay. Also be advocate for your child to paint the picture. All right, sure. I understand that this isn't safe. And maybe 
It could have been that Angie told you, didn't tell you the truth, but here's a different perspective. Could it be that Angie thought that she answered? Could it be that Angie in her little mind went on overdrive? Maybe she's an older sibling. Maybe she's protective. Maybe different perspective to bring to authorities in the situation or to the administrators in the situation. Another story, another perspective here or example, if you will, is a birthday party. Okay. Think about a birthday party. I don't care how old your kid is, or even if you are an adult, I don't care how old you are when you go to a party. There's typically a lot happening. There's a lot of food, a lot of different tastes, a lot of different smells, a lot of different people, a lot of noises, music, everybody chatting, laughter, so much happening. If you are a child, there could be a trampoline park. You could have a bounce house. You could have games being played. There is so much happening at birthday parties that your kid, not acting like they normally do, could also be related to overstimulation. When it's time to leave, if they're not wanting to leave, if you have a toddler and they start crying, pitching a fit, but they have been playing for over three hours and all of a sudden you say, okay, it's time to go, party's over. And they throw the biggest tantrum and you're like, man, this is not how my child typically behaves. I don't know what's happening. Just know that whenever they have been playing for three hours, two hours, three hours, they've been socializing, they've been having fun. They have also exhausted their sensory processing. There has been so much happening, so much that's been going on that when the party's over, they can't easily say, okay, fine, it's time to go home whenever they're learning to regulate their emotions. So again, have grace with your child in these moments. Maybe give them a warning. Say, hey, you know what? Five minutes, party is almost over. We're about to wrap up. Or little sibling has to take a nap. Or hey, we're about to have to go to the bathroom. It's it's very common, not at birthday parties necessarily, but you know when kids are playing together that they don't even want to stop to go to the bathroom. So they pee their pants and then it's this frustration and you're like, what? My kid's been potty trained for three years. What is happening? Overstimulation is exhaustion of the brain. When a child, a person is overstimulated, don't hold them accountable to behave like they typically do because they have exhausted their sensory processing. So just have grace. It's really what this episode is about, is to empower you to think about these environments when your kids have been overstimulated. Things like watching a long movie where there's been a lot of action or a lot of words for your preteen or teen to process, uh, a, a mystery to solve, or a lot of conflict that in that you get really carried away in that situation. And so for your child to turn it off and then legit sit in silence for a whole minute, taking a deep breath and not saying a word and you're over there asking, hey, how, what did you think? Did you like the movie? That was great, wasn't it? And you don't even give them time to process what just happened. This also happens with with sports. At the end of a game, if you ask your child, so how was that? This happens to us after training. This happens to us after games. Give your child, and they're like, I don't know, I'm still, I I didn't even hear what the coach said at the end. That is because, again, you have been competing, the child's been competing. He or she has been exhausting their emotional tank. There's been so much happening that at the end, they can't really put into words. They are needing a breather. They need some time to think about what happened. So I have practical advice to wrap this up with you. Recognize the activities that overstimulate your child. Every child is different. So what overstimulates your child? What exhausts them that cause that exhaustion to the brain? Because of an overload of sensory input and then know how to help your child mentally regulate after a high sensory environment. 
So was it a birthday party? Maybe don't plan any a dinner out with friends after a birthday party because that's another high, highly um, sensory simulation activity. Maybe you plan a quiet evening where you sit out by the fire and you relax and you listen to some calm music. Recognize the activities that send your kids on overdrive that overstimulates their brain so you can almost shelter them to a certain degree so you can protect them. If you want your kids to behave well, you need to know what makes them tick. And this is one of the ways to help your child tick really, really well. Okay, lifelong learners, that's what I have for you guys today. I really hope that you feel more equipped to bring learning to these daily little moments. Love you guys. I will see you guys next week.